Abby Nowicki, curator of the Tenor Museum here in Sweden. Join me today as I present the Bronze Age rock carvings of Tenor, a UNESCO World Heritage listed petrol. The Tenon Rock Art Site, covering 45 square kilometres, is on the west coast of Sweden, in Tenon, a town in Boston. The site displays over 40,000 outstanding examples of bronze and Iron Age rock carvings. The Tenon site has the largest concentration of rock art in Europe. The rock carvings are of highest quality and date back to 1800 BC and up until the birth of Christ. In the Tannum World Heritage Site, there are four image covered panels. The carvings at Vitlika are on the largest panel that is covered with about 500 images. It contains one of the most famous carvings, the bridal couple. The rock carvings at Litzelby date from the end of the Bronze Age to the beginning of the Iron Age, from about 700 BC up to the birth of Christ. One of the most outstanding carvings is a 2.3 metre tall warrior, the Spear God. The rock carvings at Aspigate are on a hill that is almost completely covered with carvings. On the main panel, there are carvings of wildlife, warriors and ships. In the upper part, there is a scene that appears as a sun disk is held up by two women. Rock carvings at Fossum, they depict over 200 images. There are some unpainted carvings, including the sun horse. was discovered almost 200 years ago in the 18th century and it has been the subject of much research and excitement since. They were added to the UNESCO World Heritage List in 1994. The Tenon site is historically hugely significant. The carvings show detailed motifs that illustrate human history and combined with archaeological artefacts found near the site provide a record of chronological continuity dating back from 1800 BC to the birth of Christ, with several images dating back to the last ice age. The carvings give us a vivid insight into the Bronze and Iron Age people's mythology and view of the world. They provide evidence of historical figures, myths, beliefs, rituals, lifestyles, conquests and events. The carvings are also unique artistic achievements in abstract style that has inspired many modern artists. In a community where there was no written language, images were of great importance. It appears that people continued to return to the site to carve symbols as a historical record, spiritual ritual, or just perhaps pure art. Carvings were made on shallow rock mounds and made using stone tools. The similar composition and cutting style indicates that one person did most of the carvings. Some motifs were repeated many times. They depict prehistoric stories of love, power, worship and rituals. This is important to show life-giving forces of sun, water and fertility. Many aspects of the daily life Mythical and religious beliefs of people during the Bronze Age are depicted using carvings of humans, animals, godlike figures, men with weapons like swords and axes, boats, hunting wild animals and religious rituals. According to historian Jared Milstry, the most important figure was the ship. Out of 40,000 carvings, 10,000 were of ships. The ship was also the most important means of transportation. It made conquests and fishing possible. They didn't draw the common ship. It was an icon. It represented the path of the sun. The sun ship is depicted as a hull with lines representing the crew. It carries the sun horse. 
that they believed carries the sun across the sky during the day. What are the threats to the site? The main threats to the site are acid rain from pollution, the salt air from the North Sea, rainwater runoff and winter ice covering the surface of the rock. Visitors cause damage by walking on and touching the petroglyphs. Sometimes there is vandalism. All these elements together mean the rock is threatened by both physical and chemical weathering. The rock has become badly damaged and is very fragile. What have they done about all these threats? Well, over the last few decades, many rock carvings have deteriorated and vanished since 1994. Much study has been done into the weathering and preservation of the Tanum Arch granite surfaces. Some ideas for slowing the erosion are to install roof coverings, water cleaning and burying the rock with different types of material, such as soil and peat. Walkways help to keep the visitors' feet off the rocks. Management plans are in place to protect the site for future generations to benefit from. The Swedish Rock Art Archives store copies of the petroglyphs in documents, laser images, all the photographs, 3D models and tracings taken from the rocks. This is for the preservation of the history. Since their discovery and before they were recognised as important, many of the rock carvings were painted red to highlight them and to make them more visible. Unfortunately, this is done with no thought about their preservation or scientific importance. Archaeologists are opposed to painting the carvings red. The newly found carvings are now left without being painted. We don't know if the creators of the art originally highlighted the carvings with paint, but archaeologists know that the fresh carvings were lighter than the surrounding rock. So when they were new, they did stand out. Today, the intriguing and mysterious site is visited by hundreds of thousands of fascinating tourists from all around the world. Tourists get to visit a Bronze Age farm, a museum, and go on awe-inspiring guided tours. This experience at Tanner gives visitors a vivid picture into the daily life, prehistoric religion, and myths of our European ancestors in the Bronze Age through the Iron Age and up until the birth of Christ. I hope you've enjoyed your time in Tanner with me. I'm Abby Nowicki. Good night.